for anyone that plays against him. In this case, uh, Dracos. Yeah, good luck, mate. We're in to pick some bands for the deciding game here of Group A versus Group B. Misfits have already banned away the Zaya, the Galio. Zach and Kenan reply. Thresh is on my mind. And last time, Elise has been go. banned out in previous games. So with Zach banned, as you said, Thresh, you would anticipate goes up in priority. But I wouldn't mind actually seeing Misfits throw a spanner in the works and maybe pick like a Rakan first. Something like this that we've seen them pair with other support, uh, with other AD carries. But that I like. I like this ban coming out. The Twitch is the best pick we've seen so far for Steelback. Get it out of there. Don't let him play it. See what Vitality can bring to the table. Well, Vitality have said no Thresh for Ignor. Uh, remove that away from him. Ignore, definitely one of the stronger performing Thresh players. And with Elise available, yep. Maxwell instantly going to lock that win in. Despite, by the way, having Lee Sin available. But that's also a denial from Joko, somebody who has a wealth of Elise games under his belt. Yeah, exactly. And now we look at the attention Vitality have to play. They've highly prioritized Rumble in each game and won the laning phase every time because of it. Now, will it be Tom Kench? Will it be Rakan? Is it going to be that Lee Sin coming through? Or maybe even Kha'Zix for Joko? We'll have to take a look at as we go throughout the draft. What a time to figure that out. First time we're going to see Ash this series. I think that's clever as well, because it's going to deny it from Misfits. When you've already got an Elise locked in yeah. for Misfits, you've, you've got a pretty key ingredient in an early game pick champion. Uh, the Ash would just make that more powerful from longer range, and it's one of the key tools that allowed Misfits to actually win uh, this series last week. Yeah, it was, and, and the Varus will be the response coming out from Misfits most likely, as you see it is locked in. Oh, the Blitzcrank's available. Oh, indeed. Oh. We've got some Blitzcrank's fans in the audience. Well, as long as this ro uh, golem rolls, there won't be any dust on Misfits <laughs> at the end of this series. But nevertheless, we, uh, we'll have to watch this one as it goes. What I'm a fan of are the Blitzcrank from uh, Ignor and Misfits is the fact that Ignor ran it in their loss last week mm -hmm. to G2. Yeah. Um, and then stuck with it in the third game, yeah. where it was a victory. And stress, while we're waffling about Blitzcrank, yeah. Olaf has been locked in here for Joko. So Olaf, we have seen uh, it's a lot of junglers start to pick up once you go deeper into a champion pool. But when Kha'Zix is normally available, well, while it's available, but we've seen the likes of Rek'Sai we've started to see over in LCK and LPL. Olaf, of course, good for running through fights. Uh, not great, no, or Blitzcrank's not super great against uh, an Olaf, where you can just kind of not really hook him. But we'll have to watch how Joko can do. Historically, it has been a decent pick for him. Three games played, two wins, one loss on the 2017 season yeah. for Joko and Olaf. And of course, uh, if he gets hooked by Blitz, I like it, and all the CC that's already on offer. Shen once again finds himself in the ban pool. Uh, Kled was the other phase two ban from Vitality. Tom Kench, the response from Misfits. And we need to see what Van is going to run in the support role. And I guess Braum is still up and available if he wants to go that route. Uh, looking at some of his other champion pool, I mean, Galio was banned away. Play something crazy like a... Rakan's still available as well. Yeah, you could play Rakan. Play something crazy like an Alistair. It's a Blitz crank. Really give him something that can punish, and uh, it's going to be the Braum. It's going to be the boring pick in the bottom lane. But it's fine. Like, Ash Braum, good engage, good amount of push potential, and you can kind of deny a lot of what the Blitzcrank wants to do. Now, Ignar will roam heavily, look out towards the mid lane, try and get picks over there. But if this is a Corky that comes through, which hasn't been banned, then Misfits have a champion that can very easily escape a Blitzcrank hook. All right, will they commit to a third game of Corky? for Power of Evil, or will Nuke Duck look for a counter pick in that regard? When the LeBlanc is banned away once more, Alfari, they're going to be the recipient of Jarvan in the top lane. Something we have seen significantly more of, uh, definitely becoming more and more standard. And mid lane pick for PoE. Safe, reliable, I mean, Syndra's still up, Orianna's still up. Orianna would synergize well with the Jarvan, of course, and uh, give them Decent team fight presence, and not a whole lot of things you can pick against the Orianna that are going to heavily punish it. The Lucian would be available if Nuke Dog would want it, and that is a lane that uh, you know a lot of teams have used against the Orianna. You get the early laning advantage, and then just push and try and get the side lane presence at the same time. Does decently well at escaping Blitzcrank as well. And it was banned in both previous yeah. games. Nuke Dog is feeling it. He's locked in Lucian in the mid lane. 
and it is a snowball champion. The analyst test talked specifically about Lucian uh, earlier in the day and how it is it is very reliant on snowballs, very yeah. reliant on early game. And by Tati, well, actually, they've had pretty good early games this week. They have. For the most part. For the most part. Now, I mean, if you give Nuke Dug a kill or two early on, with this Lucian, you should be able to do a lot of work. The problem is, if he doesn't dodge out an Ignar hook, if he doesn't dodge out a cocoon early game, because likely that's where Misfits are going to go, either mid lane or top lane, then Vitality may be crippled from this Lucian in the middle lane. Just like we've seen so many teams be. Like Splice yes. couldn't play around the Lucian. G2 couldn't play around the Lucian. The only European team really that has been able to is H2K. Let's see whether or not Vitality join those ranks. About eight hours ago, one of our stats team predicted a 2-1 victory in favor of Vitality. Is he the new prophet or not? You guys jump on Twitter. Tell us if you agree. Hashtag VIT win. Will upset league continue? Will we start cross group play with Misfits going down to Vitality? That's the question we're about to answer. And that's the question you and I get to witness, Stress. We absolutely do. Uh, how much does that seem paying you for all of this? <laughs> Not enough, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, we'll see if Misfits can squash the bee, just like a swatted fly, or whether Vitality can sting back for a 2-1 uh, win on this series. Oh, we're going to see. They're going to have to just lean on some of their good carries if they really want to squash this bug. Yep. And there's two good carries indeed for Vitality. A lot of damage oh. to speak of. Okay, so Vitality aren't playing into it right now, but... <laughs> they could be. Basically, solo queue, what happens is you go to the enemy blue buff with Blitzcrank. One thing you can do in competitive, because people always try and get vision over the Raptors, is you sit five people at the Raptors and they never get away. And of course, go back to game one, when Nuketuck was moving in to contest those yeah. Raptor camp. It was some shenanigans, some evil shenanigans that Vitality were putting together. Unfortunately, no response from Ignar, no lucky hook. He's gonna have to go fishing elsewhere. Oh, look, he's, oh I thought he was coming back for a second. Look, he, he's thinking about it. They're thinking whether they wanna actually go. And look, Hansama and Ignar now venture back towards the ward, but it's nothing. It's a whole lot of nothing going on in the beginning of this one. But the ward that Vitality initially placed will spot out Maxwell's starting area on this blue buff. Hasn't spotted him yet because he's been in the bush. But it will. As soon as he crosses out, Misfits are already in the lane looking for that hook. And it's going to be a devastating lane if that hook lands on Ash. Chrome can't do a whole lot to defend if it lands early, but look, yeah, Vitality, wait for the minion lane, uh, wave. The minion wave, and just walk into lane. Yeah, you need multiple uh, levels for Braum to be able to stand behind me and then put up the unbreakable yep. combo that we have seen a few times already. Um, this split. Alfari, by the way, starts to W that Golden Aegis on Jarvan, expecting some early trading into Cabo. Cabo is once again on the Rumble. He's he's had very good games on this yeah. Rumble. Laning phase has been strong into Alfari. Um, team fights, most of the equalizers have been pretty good. Yeah, there's, there's that one. The <laughs> odd one has gone a bit awry, but uh, at the end of the day, it's had enough impact for Vitality to force the deciding game. And I, I find it interesting that Alfari goes to this Javan because won't have the easiest of laning phases into Rumble. You can obviously punish in more all-in trades, um, but won't exactly be easy to capitalize. And that'll mean Maxwell might have to come topside. Yeah. Was playing this Elise, was standing just out of vision for a while, but was spotted by Nuke Duck coming through the Raptor area. They know exactly where Maxwell is. Yeah, and of course, this Jarvan struggles in a fair few lane matchups, but yeah. definitely more impactful in the mid game. Yeah. Once you get that Cataclysm down, he's, he's a good ball delivery system for Power of Evil. I mean, so is Max Law on the Elise, to be fair. There's options for him. But we, we, we need to see from Power of Evil, honestly, a performance of Nuketuck's caliber from the previous game. Nuketuck's Oriana was fantastic. But whose Oriana has always been impressive? Yeah. Whether he's taken Smite or Teleport or whatever summoner. Power of Evil, you always feel does well on this Oriana pick. It's one of his synonymous. Come on! 
Uh, Igna didn't even BM. No laugh, no dance. Control three. <laughs> Control three. Okay, Maybe we'll he hasn't it. got it. We'll wait for it. I so. shouldn't actually be doing that. The referees on stage will tell me off after the game. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but Igna zoning away Steelback and Vanda. This is just really lane dominance. Plus seven CS already. Yes, there's a way of pushing to steal back. Mm -hmm. So he'll be able to catch that up very quickly. But um, confident play in the 2v2. Just going to love the skin choice, though. Because you get the horn, like the, the, the Dukes of Hazard style horn that comes through. Igna, however, just going to secure vision on the bottom side. Uh, Vitality have full top side control. And that's where we now got to look at where Joko is going aggressive to try and deny the Elise gank potential here, but I think Joko might be a little bit late because Elise is already making her way up into that lane. All right, this is going to be a 2v2. The flag and drag's already caught out. Cavill oh, is holding oh. on to the flash. Flashes away from the cocoon. Here comes Joko. Alfari oh, gets first blood. Joko responds, and Maxwell's forced to run away. So, kill secured by Joko, the jungler for Vitality, and Alfari, the top laner, with the first blood bonus. So, Max Law gets his effect off up in the top side. That first blood should help Alfari get through this laning phase and build effectively against this rumble. But if Olaf camps him, if Olaf comes back to the top side, and Alfari uses his EQ combo, doesn't have flash available. Same could be said for Max Law. We're going for round two. We are indeed. Cocoon catches onto Cabo. The the Safari and Maxwell. Worse. Yeah, they don't want to change. It's always a drop down. There was only ever one Matrix movie made. <laughs> Refuse to acknowledge the rest. He has a replay of that first blood stress. Yeah, this one. Easy EQ combo on to Cabochard into the rest of the damage following through. A little unfortunate that uh, they didn't get a kill just before Cabo flashed out, but they trade flash for flash. Alfari gets the kill. First blood traded back. And now Ignaz on the roam. Looking for that hook in the mid lane, but here against Illusion, it's not really going to happen. Yeah, so tough to catch somebody with Relentless Pursuit. Yeah. And Flash and Exhaust, by the way. Well, there we go. The E's been used. A couple of pings onto him. Nuke Tuck. Ten seconds before the E's available again. Flash hook, flash hook, flash hook. No, no. Not getting too excited, getting too antsy here. Yeah, it's not quite the same when you're like, walk in division, walk in division. Yeah, that's uh, also true. <laughs> Ignaz is like, okay, I've had enough of this. I'm going back to lane. I'll stress, uh, in the previous game, 48 kills were secured between Misfits and Vitality. It is the uh, tied for fourth most kills in the 2017 season. Okay. Um, That's a lot of kills. It is indeed. Um, 48, then 49, then 53, then 54. Those are the records. Wow. Yeah. It's fascinating. It is. I mean, I'm so glad you're enthralled by this information. And Misfits, they will hope to not do that again. Right? They're, they're looking for a more clean game. Find a pick with Blitz mm. or set up an engage with Jarvan. <laughs> I love I love how the meta is at a point where we're like, they want a clean game with the Blitz crank. Yes. Okay? Yes. Just, just get the Blitz hood, get the kill, clean game. Don't need anything else. That's... I love this <laughs> it's meta. It's so good. I I'm love very it. excited just, about it. I, you can just play almost any champion this year. It's great. Um, I do think Blitz crank it's a little underwhelming to watch when it's failing, though. Yeah. Because you just have that sense that nobody is really happy. You're not happy, the enemy aren't happy, viewers aren't happy. Yeah, exactly. Um, the impact of an, a Blitzcrank with no vision just kind of fizzles. Yeah, exactly. Um, glad we have a vision toggle here. Alfari just walked into the river and. Vitality's control ward will spot out Ignar. Uh, I don't think Vitality know Max Law is inside the top lane. And oh. Cataclysm blocks his entry. Cocoon, Cocoon catches onto Cabo Shard. Venomous Bite comes down as well. And Max Law and Alfari just double team Cabo. Jump to the mid lane really quickly. Nuke Duck is moving forward with that E. Uh, has already used his culling, by the way, that is on cooldown. And Joko with vision control. He's going for another blue buff invade here, Stress. Yeah, and you know, Joko has been very effective going up against Max Law, and Ma Joko's just going to wait. He knows he's got this control warded. Oh, Max Law, Look at the Viola. damage. Joko's looking for Max Law. Max Law drops down. Come on, Protect comes up. Shockwave catches onto Joko. Here comes Nuketuck. Culling will be available very, very soon. Flashes for flashes. Ignar's available for support. He's going to oh. catch onto Nuketuck. Shockwave's on cooldown. It was used onto Joko in the pit. Ignar is now running for his life, and 
Joko successfully invades, gets himself a kill, and steals away a buff. That's actually the seventh of the series. Really good play for Joko in terms of controlling some of those buffs and locking them down. So this is all the way back to the attempt in the top side. They should have known that something was up because Ignar was on his way, but I don't think they were anticipating Maxwell going into lane that early on. The Blitzcrank maybe gave him a false sense of security and it was for the uh, kill up in the top side was easy to pick off, but so was this one for Joko, aggressive onto Max Law. Nowhere really to return to and it's an easy kill. Despite the shield coming through and the shockwave, Joko just too strong, too much damage early on and Misfits have to back away from there. Yeah, Max Law flashing fairly late there, I feel. Ended up going on cooldown and still dying. Nuketak jumps in, piercing right connects the culling. Wow, Power Eagle eating nearly every single shot. And Nuke Duck able to completely push Power of Evil White. There's some stats from his game too. Just really, really phenomenal performance. 810 damage per minute on Orianna. Just tells you how involved he was in those 48 kills. Jump to the top lane. Glacial Fisher goes down. You heard the horn, the power horn, Dukes of Hazard. And of course, it just ends up being a little bit of a fizzle. Yeah, about as good as the movie they made. Uh-huh. <laughs> Don't watch it. That there was the a remake, of course. The, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. The, uh, now, as, as we settle into this game, as it's going to get a bit of a longer game because there hasn't been this big impact in the early game that we've been expecting. Yes, there's been a couple of kills, but this isn't a loose open game. You have to look now where Power of Evil, where Hans Sama are looking to go with this, and Power of Evil Upping towards the Rod of Ages, a little bit more of a tanky stacking build. Uh, not the usual build that we see out of Orianas. You see the Morellan Armacon going in towards Rabbit and Deathcap most of the time. But this is kind of a Power of Evil special, right? He always has these unique little twists that nobody else quite is doing. You see it every so often, but we'll make him tankier, a little bit more. Uh, utility based. We'll see how that actually works out for him because right now he's going to need Max Law's help. Yeah, it's a two on three. The equalizer's been used. Maxwell tried to deliver the shockwave. That's at least a kill into Nuketag. Now Maxwell's being run down. Alzar is looking for the cataclysm. He's locked Joko in. Joko can't get across the wall. Ignor finds the rocket punch and the grab onto Cabo Shot. Now Alfari's running for his life. Ashero comes down, flies wide. It's a one for two in favor of Misfits. Well, that's one use of the Javan in response to the Olaf. The Olaf Volt will get you out of just about everything, but Terrain will block you in. It's enough to get the two-for-one trade in favor of Misfits and continue a good early game streak from them, but they needed that to kind of fire back against Vitality because Vitality had started making swap up towards topside. We're looking to offset some of the aggressive plays that Cabochard has been on the receiving end of, but Misfits now stabilizing a slight lead. Yeah, of course, Misfits, they maintain that 1,000 gold lead They've got themselves a Jarvan who's got three of the four kills, which is crucially very important. And the game has kind of played around the 80 carries. We've not seen Hans Sama or Steelback mm -hmm. hugely pivotal yet. That Ash arrow flew a little wide, and you actually see a replay of this one. Uh, I say 80 carries, and then the actual roll. Yeah. I'm not the champion. It's okay. <laughs> we, we knew what it was. We knew what you were talking about. Nuke Dug ended up falling on this one quite easily. It's an easy combo for Max Law to get the kill, and then. Joker's like, I've got this. Ah, oh, that really is painful when you see an Olaf getting caged in, but then Misfits just pull back away. The important thing you're talking about with AD carries is if it maintains like this, then Steelback is going to be on one of these back foot rolls where we've criticized Vitality for. If he's just an ult tool with, not, with no damage coming through, that's when they haven't looked successful. That's when Vitality have looked underwhelming. And that, that can't happen to me. After seeing the last game of how good Steelback did, this damage per minute, super high, like maybe second only to Kobe on the Twitch. Yep, which, uh, uh, quite quite possible. I mean, Steelback's previous record was 748 damage per minute, and he was playing Varus against H2K. So he did even more. I mean, look, again, 24 kills for the team, 48-minute yep. game. All of those things are going to play into, into his favor for what is a... Fairly generic stuff, but an interesting <laughs> one, nonetheless. Well, something that also is interesting is Vitality's lack of vision control. Once again, means the dragon is going to Misfits. Yeah, another early dragon to Misfits, another valuable dragon as well. Um, may the odds be ever in your favor, uh, is apparently what Misfits are saying, because they got triple infernals in the previous game, and then game one, it started with a mountain as well. 
They just got themselves another Mountain Drake. But look at the mini-map, guys. Vitality starting to threaten. Ash Arrow is available, and there's a ward inside the Sentinel Pit. So if Misfits overstep, and they're starting to surround Vitality, and it could be up to another team fight. Blue buff says, no, this belongs to Misfits. Remember I talked earlier, Joko has stolen seven buffs this series already. Looking to make it number eight. Blue buff secured onto Max Law. Flash is used to dodge the Ash Arrow. Luke Tuck is going to dash over the wall. Ignor will pick up a kill. Oh, the hook! Oh, the hook! Onto Cabo! He's under the tower, and Power of Evil gets another. Nuke Duck's culling does nothing, and it's two kills to Misfits. Oh, Vitality going way too far into Misfits territory for a blue buff of all things. It doesn't quite connect for them. Misfits are able to take the fight on the tail end of it, and now they're gonna lose the tower in the bottom side. Vitality get pushed away from that Rift Herald, and it means that Misfits are in full control of a third game in this series. So let me just summarize. Misfits get first blood. Misfits get first dragon. Misfits get tower first blood. They're up three kills already, and they've got a team composition that can shine in the mid-game. And this is how the play happened. Good response to the engage from Vitality on the Misfit side. Yeah, and you can see Ash Arrow again not connecting. It was from range, but still not quite there. And Kabosh puts himself just too close to the fire. Max range hook. And Cabo Shard under the tower just completely falls apart. Like, Misfits, <laughs> just a scratch of the head for Cabo yep. Shard. Nothing, nothing really more to say that about sucks, that. That sucks, you look at that, you're like, that hook wasn't even for me. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't meant to eat that. It's like, steal bag, why didn't you take that yes, one? Yes, Vander, you were on the front line. That was, that was your hook with your name on it. But hooks don't discriminate. They just catch whoever's in front of them. Yep. And ended weaker than it started. Yeah, it's OK. It's <laughs> fine. Tower number two falls in favor of Misfits as 15 and a half minutes have gone by. And Vitality are two and a half thousand gold down. Down in every single objective. On the plus side, they also get enabled in the mid game, right? Ash Arrow plus Lucian plus Olaf and Rumble. There's a lot of tools that Vitality can use to try and silence the crowd who are Trying to put together a Misfits chant. It's getting there. The Misfits chant is getting there. Uh, you know, maybe after a Baron will be all orchestrated in time. But everything for Misfits right now is looking good. They've got side lane control utilizing this Javan. He can fight Nuke Duck or Cabo Shard. Basically, whichever one takes a step out to the side wave. Now you can see nearly at that Titanic Hydra point for Alfari. Igna! <laughs> <laughs> Says, look at me now. Uh. This is my Krug. No more the others. Steals away the big one. Krug Alec life right there. Here we go. <laughs> we can get the minimap, and once again, Rift Herald has started. Uh, it feels like Misfits have just had just really significantly better objective control if they can get this one cleanly. Ash Arrow is available and could come from mid lane. Flash forward. It means Nuketuck is forced to flash himself. Ash Arrow can steal back. Still not fired. Still not fired. Charlie on Olaf again. It's another one. Alfari's locked Joker into the pit. Shockwave picks up a double kill for Power of Evil, and my fantasy is ecstatic. <laughs> you mean LCS fantasy, right? Like no, we're getting into my fantasy. Fantasy LCS. I don't, I don't I'm going to that. win. <laughs> well, this is a pretty confident game, here, Stress. Yeah, it is. It's uh, it's a confident game. It looked like Rift Herald was just spawned as well towards the middle lane. That's Inner Tower in the top lane going through. Equalizer Rift Herald down. cares not for your board. He's been summoned. Cabashot flashes over the wall. He's able to burn down Ignar. Power of Evil's running for his life, but no the Winter's crash. Bite stings and Steelback shuts him down. Misfits in too much of a hurry to try and get too many objectives. They were pushing top side, recall out with Hans Sammer and Alfari, and then the spawn Rift Herald way far away without pushing the wave up. And really didn't address the fact that Vitality was still standing in the mid lane. So this is how it all started. A um, couple of problems here for the Doctor of Pogonomics, Ignar at this point. Couldn't really see Nuke Duck and really had to back away off the hook. But Hans Sammer makes it easy. Just gets that uh, chain of corruption. Then here we go, Alfari once again says to Joko, there's no escape. Easy second kill. And this is where Misfits look a little bit kind of 
just spread too thin. They spawn yeah. Rift Tower, looking to try and go aggressive. Parabibal can't quite output enough damage now and can't escape away from Cabochard. And it just means Misfits to get a lead, extend their lead, and don't lose it, but get slowed down quite heavily. Yeah, what? punished by the engage from Vitality. And I see what, what? you see. What? I see what you see indeed. What the is Stinger. A Nash is two has been completed by. Okay, so let's. Well, hold that thought. Choco gets pulled forward. He's Ragnarok in a Ragnar rolling. There's going to be an instant uh, repel from Maxwell. He jumps down to the Honey Fruit. Teleport being channeled by Cabo Shot. He's looking to jump onto the Banana Bush. And Alfari's he's got the Baby Cage. The Cataclysm is available. And who will get locked in? Rocket Grab catches Banda. Cocoon catches Banda. And Power of Evil with Nash's tooth sinks his fangs in. Once that extra attack speed, those empowered auto attacks of Oriana, just make sure you go and get it. You can see H2K getting ready for a Look big at Yankos. Game. Yankos is trying to figure out what's going on here. He's saying, those hands. look, a Mountain Drake, an Infernal Drake, not even SKT would give up this game, just like he <laughs> tweeted during the last one. Unfortunately, Yankos, not quite the prediction that uh, would have gone his way. Yeah. Misfits, by the way, with the lead at 20 minutes. 25 and 3 record here in the LCS. This is a significant lead, if ever I've seen one. 5,000 gold. And it's thanks to plays like this, uh, where if not, I think he landed three hooks in a row. Admittedly, it was like shooting fish in a barrel, but still, it counts. Yeah. Gets one on to the Olaf, and then that kind of turns Olaf's aggression on. It wasn't quite enough for Vitality to be able to continue this fight. So that was the first hook actually landing. Fast forward a little bit more. Easy one on Vando as well. Right next to him, Cocoon. Everything combos very well for Misfits. They work well off the single target crowd control abilities. And honestly, I think that's really deadly, giving them a combination of this, whether it's the, the Blitzcrank, the Elise. We've seen the, the Ash and the Varus have that kind of effect as well. A little less single target, a little bit more AoE, but still. Stress, I know Oriana has some ability power. Yeah. Scaling in her passive. Yes. That clockwork wind up. Mm -hmm. I want you to talk to me about this Nash's tooth and why you think it was locked in. Power of Evil, the man in the middle, Never been one to bow to Meta. Um, and Shara between the uprights. That's not going to work. No, not going to work. Um, it's an interesting one, because as you said, the theory is that you get a lot of extra AP onto those auto attacks. I still feel... Oh, his counter shot gets grabbed. Uh, we may not be able to answer that question. Shot away down three! Fisher Fisher comes down and oh, 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 oh. the baby cage locks in Vitality! They can't escape! It's a double kill for Power of Evil, and Alfari loses his life! My word, a five-man cataclysm! Ignor fancies himself another shot. Minions are blocking the way. Oh. Where is the rocket grab? He's looking for Nuke Duck. He's fishing for Nuke oh, oh, he gets it! Oh, the flash into predictive hook. Take a bow, Ignor! And that's got the Misfits chance flying in Berlin. Oh, he makes it look too easy. The first hook, Nuke Duck dodges out. Cabochard gets hook, hit by another hook that wasn't meant for him. And five-man dunk into the damage Malfari. He knows he's dead at this point. And it was all a bait after the shockwave. The autos, fair enough to finish it off. And look, Ignar just lining it up, waiting, stalking Nuke Duck. He knows he's getting it. He can already see the hug flash. Got him! Oh, Berlin, I love you guys! The build-up and the crowd cheer. We ignore Blitzcrank. Man, this guy is just... Oh, damn it, Dracos. This guy is popping off. Just <laughs> such a great couple of weeks. And Did you, Have you said Hella and popping off in the same I best believe of that three? I have. I have indeed. Ignore. Are you getting ready for Rift Rivals? Hold on. Over here? I have a oh. Here I said earlier. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Joko's Ragnaroking. He's not going to get caught by the rocket grab. Ends up being caught out. How far he's going to put the Cataclysm down into three hunts somewhere. And Nuketuck going toes for toe. The Shockwave. Not going to be enough as Nuketuck is able to flash away from it. Nuketuck will get caught out by Maxlaw here. 
Running for his life. Bitsy spider. Lex Law takes a volley to the face. He's already used Repel Cocoon. Oh, oh it's a steal oh. back underneath the tower. Oh. The steal back sidesteps. Gets out of range. Now Ignor's in trouble. Luke Duck takes another tower shot. How on earth has Vitality done this? They've won the fight. These fractured misfits throughout the entire fight. And Power of Evil, look at him. He's still so high in health, but hasn't Auto. got much. Auto. Get the autos. Auto. Where is it? Go, Nash's tooth. Go. Get those autos down. Oh. Oh. That was underwhelming. Don't know if I'm a believer yet. Hey, look, Brom, super effective against Nash's <laughs> tooth, Oriana. <laughs> puts the shield up and nothing really happens. So this is how the fight started. We saw a lot of focus here. Hansan has to flash out over the Ash Arrow just to get himself to safety. Then Nuketuk picks a fight. He knows he can take this fight as long as he just dodges out the damage that comes from the Oriana. Shockwave well flashed out from. And Alfari had gone aggressive into the back line, did not connect. Max Law had turned, peeled away to try and get the kill. Wasn't able to close the gap on Nuketuk. And from there, honestly, at this point, Misfits just can't really take the fight. Ignar, he's just praying he had his ultimate available. Yep. But it wasn't. He'd already used it in the fight. And <laughs> Vitality fighting back in this team fight quite spectacularly. Oh, it really is. Uh, look, when we come out of this, <laughs> take, take stock of the situation. They're still down 5,000 gold. They've got one tower to four. But uh, Power of Evils... <laughs> On hit Oriana? Is that even a, a thing? I guess we'll see how the rest of the build plays out. Looks like he's going towards... He's going uh, Rabidans next. Looks so like he's, he's going towards Death Cap. So he's going to be like Death Cap Lich Bane. That would be epic, this build out. That would be pretty epic. It's, yeah. Let's see if he does. Having a little bit of fun with it. Definitely winning over some hearts. It's an interesting style. The whole Misfit squad, I mean... <laughs> ignore on this Blitzcrank. Really good performance. And uh, Just saying, by the way, 24 kills. Uh, uh, in about 24 and a half minutes. You in these rounds. That is, that is that is half the game time, half the kills it, of the previous match. All right, let's see if we can keep this up. Blue Sentinel, mine. Mine. Uh, mine. Sentinel slowly getting bored. Picked up by Power of Evil. Secures it with the extra auto attack. All that power comes through. The power of evil. It is indeed. On Summer, by the way, was close enough for Chain of Corruption. Decided not to fire it. And We've kind of devolved into a little bit of anarchy here in Game 3. I mean, did we want order or chaos? I actually chaos. only wanted chaos. Uh, yeah, I, yes. that's why I picked the chaos icon yeah. in Client. That's what we're going for. Maybe that's what Vitality and Misfits are running. There's one guy here who's picked yeah. the chaos. The rest of the guys did. It's like, yeah, I'm going to be Yasuo, order, mate. Order tokens. That's the only thing that felt bad. I wanted chaos yeah. to win. Just hate supporting Yasuo. But then it's Riven <laughs> is for, for order. So you can't really, like... At least Riven won tricks are skilled players. Ooh. Yeah, calling out all those Yasuo won tricks. I mean, I'm not a Yasuo player, so oh. that's horrible. All right, like, steal back. Uh, definitely needs to get better accuracy. Power of evil. <laughs> Flashed away from the undertow. It's about sending a message. Yeah, Joko sent a message. Hi, bye. Ran past with Ghost and Ragnarok. So Alfari, however, uh, Guardian Angel has been picked up. That means next time he gets that five-person cataclysm and he gets killed, he will come back and maybe get one more EQ combo in a fight. But that's probably about it. But that's Might important. Not survive longer. See, that's important because power people can get more autos down. Ah, what yes. would actually be next level, what, what would be next level is Power of Evil win Hurricane, oh. fourth item. And then let Alfari lock people in the Cataclysm, and then he just hurricane them with uh, his passive to death. And then we're going to get Zeke's Convergence, we'll get an Arden Sensor, we'll yeah. get everything. Hey, I'm um, down, I'm yeah, down. If Misfits are keen, they've got a, a big lead, they've got four kills, and they're going to pick up another Mountain Drake here. There's no contest from Vitality. And it's another... You know, scaling item, another advantage that Misfits can just accrue. I love when Power of Evil comes with these ridiculous builds because you're like, there is no way that is as efficient as the regular build. And then he wins every game hey, that he does this. Based analysis, six, three, and five. Ignar got the flash available. Rocket grab is primed. But Misfits don't fancy a fight. Look how they're splitting up on the minimap because there are two large waves pushing towards them straight. So the game has slowed down um, and it's kind of returned to a little little bit of normality. Yep. As Vitality are trying to chase Misfits and punish them. And uh, speaking of a team whose play style maybe hasn't always been normality, Fnatic warming up for their series against H2K today. I already saw the H2K guys warming up themselves. Gonna be a hype series. It will indeed. But this has been hype. Like this, I, like 
we've had Blitzcranks roaming the map, getting the surprise hooks on Nuke Duck. More important. There's a lot left in this game we as well. We had 48 kills in game two. Okay, that is that is what matters to me. Um, that is what makes me happy. And teams really just commit to the chaos. All right, Misfits, come on now. They need to they need to make a play. They've not really set up around Baron. They've not really pushed super heavily, but it feels like that's what they're doing. Stress. What are the next steps for the Misfit squad? So for Misfits, they <laughs> maybe either need Vitality to give them a pick in the way that they have done time and time again in previous games. Or for Misfits, it's a case of just starting it off. Oriana will have significant Baron damage utilizing this build. Um, so they may be able to rush it down quite quickly. But the fact of the matter is Nuketug will be able to always push back one of the side lanes. You can see Kabashad has his teleport available, so he'll go down there and absorb this Jarvan for a while. But Ooh. Misfits haven't been able to build off the lead. They built Jarvan in the early game for a very long time now. No, they haven't. But Alfari's Cataclysms have been phenomenal. Yeah, they have. Um, he's really been able to find multi-man targets, multiple fights in a row. And as it stands, Alfari is now continuing to shove out this bottom lane. Um, something uh, I have just been informed by our stats team stress. Misfits have secured 10 dragons this series. Okay. Do you know how many Vitality have? Two. Zero. Ah, it was a Not a single guess. dragon. The Elder was the focus. Here's the rush. In the previous game, Cavalry God's going to teleport, but thanks to the Nash's Tooth and Blade of the Rune King on Hans Summer. Oh, it hits Maxlaw. All right, let's see. Where is the threat? Glacial Fisher comes down. Maxlaw's going to need to repel up into the air. Chain of Corruption. Not going to split and teleport use, equalizer, ash arrow, and vitality. Just have to wave goodbye to the objective as Baron was secured. Misfits with a clean Baron. Nothing really the vitality could have done to defend against that, except for utilizing that TP quicker. They just weren't in a position because of the vision control that Misfits had. So now they're up against the Baron buff, looking at this Javan that can push out on the Rumble, on the Lucian. The Oriana's over in the side lane as well. Remember, no teleport on Power of Evil's Oriana. It's a heal on this one. And we're getting late on in the items. Gargoyle Stone Plate now completed for Alfari. If that's a locket that follows, yep. we saw what happened in game two. Even though it was a losing effort, those locket shields are huge. Yeah, and of course, the Abyssal Mask for Max Law. Yep. That's going to benefit the on-hit damage from Power of Evil. I, I figured out, by the way, Power of Evil played Corky a couple times. Yeah. He's just in the like auto attack mid lane mode yeah and he just replaced the mid lane auto attacker with another that's all uh we'll see this is like the same build he had when he played smite yeah Rootglaive. like this is almost the same thing all the way back in the 2015 season all right ignore going a little bit fishing nobody's biting though as vitality are able to move away the bottom outer turret was dropped mid inner is the only turret remaining outside of vitality's base Misfits, they're playing this one pretty clean. They got that Baron safely and, and, and without real cost. And now they're just protecting this cannon minion, waiting for the next minion wave. Yeah, just a case of walking the minion in. Javan's coming down. Hang on, that arrow landed on Hansama. It was the key target. Hansama's running for his life. Oh, what a turn. turn. Cataclysm under the tower. That locks Vander in. Steel back forced to flash away to safety. Nobody's died yet, but the inhibitor turret will. And Misfits. They baited the engage and responded fantastic. Yeah, that inner tower goes down now. Now they're looking for that inhibitor tower in the middle lane, but they're going to back away because there is no wave alongside it. So it's slow and steady for Misfits trying to advance this lead, but they don't feel comfortable enough to just aggressively go for play after play after play. And again, it's going to give Vitality opportunities to come back in this game. Yeah. And I'm really struggling with uh, Joko's Olaf at this point. It was picked fairly early on in the draft. Yeah. He's been locked in the Cataclysm multiple times. Didn't really snowball a huge amount. And when you consider other picks were up and available, like the Kha'Zix, like the Lee Sin, um, you just have to wonder, like, what was the intention? What did they want to look for? Well, early on, they were trying to take it into the Elise so that you can at least match some of the trading early game. Uh, the difficulty with playing Olaf is when the team then goes, okay, I will just play Jarvan in the top lane because it's meta, then suddenly you kind of get hard counted. And that's the yeah. problem that you're alluding to that they're running into. So I don't necessarily think it's the, the pick being bad, but it's so difficult to pull off. Yeah, and look at the minimap. Misfits are pulling off the 1-3-1. One, one. 
really, really well. Wave clear but in they the gotta, mid lane. Power Weevil has to be careful here. Like, he cannot push all the way up to the inhibitor, but Alfari can. All right, well, Alfari's going to take that one down. Power of Evil's finished the recall. Um, by the way, this will be the first dragon of the series Unless for Vitality. Uh, not this time around. Infernal it was Drake picked up. The opportunity was there. Uh, at the cost of an inhibitor in the top lane. Not worth. No. We've gone back to level one. Uh, level one. Game ah. one shenanigans from the Vitality squad. And also, stress, I'm extremely disappointed in both of these teams. Okay. The last time somebody died was at 23 minutes, 46 seconds. Oh, that's on the 10 clock. minutes ago. It's over 10 minutes without a kill. Was that the Mad Life hook as well? The... It was indeed. Ah. It's just shocking. I mean, maybe it, everybody's just leaving it because nobody can get a more flashy kill yeah, in maybe. this game. Maybe that's it. Okay, we're waiting for the flashiness then. Super Minions top lane means, well, Misfits can push the other lanes and do it. It's going to be, look, we're nearly there on Locket stone plate again yeah. like i love the games are going late enough so that we're seeing this but i think people are going to get really bored of it if it happens every single game i feel like it'll get changed <laughs> soon um just maybe a just a little bit just um, a thought when you give like ten thousand health worth of shield across the team it's uh, a little bit silly it is indeed but it is difficult to pull off of course um if there is something to say for it olaf's looking for it as well this is actually going to be a team fight of just who can not die like with all of the shields the for the longest like if your shield survives for the full duration and it never gets i mean we're gonna have four lockets in the game because yeah. both ignore and vanda already have this already. completed Alfari and joker are working towards them and misfits uh their baron has worn off they lost or conceded the infernal drake a few moments ago mm -hmm. it just feels like a, a matter of time before they start going for the mid or the bottom lane the difficulty Vitality have in this game compared to the last one is they don't have that Twitch, they don't have the Orianna that have that late game power in team fights. They're running an Ash, they're running a Lucian who can have damage, but you really have to be in a position to constantly output with auto attacks. You cannot really be falling back in the team fight, and considering they are down 10,000 gold, this yeah. should be a Misfits win. Yeah, of course, they're not going to be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with cocoons, uh, rocket grabs, shockwaves, yeah. cataclysms, all these tools that can just lock Vitality down. The one thing that I do want to say, um, Vitality have played better than I anticipated they would. Right, I and agree. A team that has struggled um, for a fairly lengthy period of time has had glimmers of hope at different times, mm -hmm. but Nuke Duck is consistently being a threat in summer. Cabo Shard is showing on Rumble, he has some proficiency, and it's just this macro, these, these team-based decisions that we continue seeing them fall apart. Vandas caught out, look at all that CC by the way. Cocoon, Chain of Corruption, Rocket Grab. Java arrives, down the dunk. It's just gonna flag and drag out to safety, and a full channel on the culling. Drops Ignor, hmm. piercing arrow comes down. You don't really want to hook Vanda. As long as he's oh. got the wall up. Ash Arrow goes wide, Steelback not the having dunk? the greatest accuracy. Steelback is locked in. Oh, 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 oh. Equalizer. Shockwave is dodged by a few, but not by Steelback. Cabochard has just dropped down. It's a double kill for Hans Summer, and Misfits are pouring down the mid lane. Look at the flat drag knock up flash from Alfari. Three kills, and Misfits use their lead. That is going to be the game for Misfits now, securing the win, easily able to get into the fight. Vitality, they'd already backed away from Misfits, but tried to re-engage. Now Nuke Duck's going to get caught out. Ignor with another fantastic play. Flash Power Fist into the rocket grab. Misfits with the minions are knocking over the Nexus turrets, and Ignor's Blitzcrank was a game changer, but Misfits confidence in game three. Take down Vitality for the win. A long series, a fun series, and honestly, at the end of it, Misfits with a result that after game one looked all but certain. Yep. And after game two, it looked very shaky because despite being ahead, Vitality while holding on for dear life and actually getting that game two win is such a significant thing. Yeah, it really is. Handshakes across the board here for Misfits and the crowd really got behind Misfits and Ignor throughout the course of game three. <laughs> Hell yeah, we did. Thanks to that guy.
Um, and just, you know, big shout outs. I think still seeing some some progression, some development from Vitality. I'm, I'm excited to see them put up a fighting game too. Yeah. Not give up, not concede. And their team fights definitely worked out very well. Yes, the team fights worked out well for Misfits. A couple of shaky moments where you look at their lanes. Uh, Paravival losing lane in one of the games. Althari struggling a little against Cabo. Um, I think for Misfits, it, it, it's kind of a, a loss, a win that they'll put in the back of their mind and not focus on too much going forward. They'll be looking at the wins like over G2 more than anything. But I think this is maybe a more telling set of games in the G2 series. I think you'll learn more from these than the G2 games. I mean, you see the huge smiles on their faces, and I, and I agree with what you're saying in terms of the decision making and, and some of the messiness. Misfits can definitely afford to clean that up. Anyways, Misfits Gaming, they came out on top in this series against Vitality. Let's send it to the analyst desk for a closer look at the series. Thank you very much. You need very interesting series overall. And I'm happy it went all the way to three games and we saw some fight from both teams, not just Misfits who we actually expected to win the series, but also Vitality yeah. just showing some fight and not just rolling over and dying. That was nice to see. Unfortunately for them, they lost this game. And uh, I want to talk to you guys about the draft specifically because the Fisher, I did hear you say when you saw the draft from Vitality, this is not the way they want to draft because they aren't playing to any of their possible strengths. Right. Uh, the draft in itself is not bad. No. But I just don't think it fits the team, as you just said, because Vitality against the better teams in Europe have not been able to get an early lead and then snowball it. They can get early advantages, but very often they will then make some mistakes and fall behind. So I think actually the way to go for them is like what we saw in game two, where you draft a really strong late game, like very late game scaling comp, Twitch, Oriana, these kind of picks. And you kind of rely on this team like Misfits to then not be able to just outright beat you in late game team fights. But I think when Vitality go for this kind of draft where they need to snowball early game, they, they're not good enough at doing that. And it often ends up just very quickly falling apart and then they don't really have a comeback mechanic. Yeah, for sure, Lucian Mid, as you mentioned, as we did mention, relies on that snowball did not happen. And I also like what Vitality, uh, sorry, what Misfits were going for. They went really back to their roots with a pick composition, really, that they enjoy playing, especially with the Blitzcrank, which, which worked it well as well. So I like the draft for Misfits. And you also said, Henning, that you uh, liked the way Misfits approached the early game and approached who they wanted to shut down, because it was top lane that they went to visit more often than not. Yeah, Maxlo really put a lot of pressure uh, helping out Alfari up in the top side, and I think that's really smart because, uh, both because it's a jar into a rumble, but, but also because uh, the illusion mid really, if he gets that snowball going, he wants to go to a side lane, and he also is running the exhaust, which means that he could potentially duel with a Jarvan, but if you get the Jarvan snowballing, there's no way that Illusion's been able to contest that. Or Nola. Well, or Nola, yeah, very <laughs> true. Uh, luckily, here for Vitality, Joko did get a return kill. Sadly, and for Vitality, second time around, Joko is not close enough to really help his uh, top laner. And despite Max Law not making it all the way inside the Jarvan cage, it is enough to obviously take down Kapo Shard. And it's a really cool point uh, because Jarvan, of course, is a champion in Europe. We've seen some really bad games where he would like fall behind early, just do nothing, be completely useless. But if he gets ahead, he's so powerful at actually moving around the map and joining in in these picks with a Blitzcrank, with an Elise. Like, if you get hit by one guy, you can hit by two or three guys right after. Yeah, and I, I quickly want to move on to the next replay because we also have an interview uh, waiting. But I did want to take a look at that Wombo combo again in the mid lane where uh, Power of Evil gets a wonderful Shockwave off and then follow up by beautiful Jarvan. Shockwave Tentacles. into Afari being the man Ooh. to look at right there. Five-man Jarvan ulti dealing damage to everyone, and that just means the rest of Misfits can easily ignore this tower here and get onto Vitality. And it's not over yet. No. It is over. Yeah, no, it's going <laughs> to come back to it. So there's one here. We're going to see some Ignar hooks. Yep. Uh, wait for it. Yeah. Wait for it. Wait, wait. Like, guys, guys. Oh. oh. The signature Blitzcrank pick there coming out of Ignar. I don't know if we're going to see a... Uh, Hiding the around the corner. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there it beautiful. is. Oh. And that is just baited, outsmarted, everything completely predicted by Ignar. Great game from him on Blitzcrank. Yeah, great game from him indeed. Uh, great job by Misfits overall. Maybe final thoughts. Vitality, a bit of fight. Nice to see. Misfits, maybe some question marks or I don't know. Uh, I mean, not really. I think Misfits looked pretty good overall. Losing to a full late game comp was not terrible at the end. They should obviously been able to close out the game, but I think Misfits pretty decent. All right, I'm sorry to <laughs> I'm rush you. Like, really I, asked the you asked I asked the question. question, but the interview is like, ready. So. I'm gonna ask a question, but I don't actually want to hear an answer. <laughs> Stop talking. <laughs> Misfits Gaming Smith later. He had a great performance against Vitality. Let's hear what he has to say after that win. That's just good. Thank you very much, Shox. I am joined by Power of Evil, the player of the series. Congratulations on that. 
Thanks. As you can hear, a lot of crowd support for you today. Now, I want to talk a little bit about your, your picks this series. Corky, come back into the meta, and then you played Oriana in that last game as well with a, a very interesting build. Well, so I like hockey a lot. I played it last split as well, and it just really fits my play style. It's like poke, but you're kind of a control mage as well. So you have your range and you have your poke. Uh, it worked out first game really, really good. And second game, I felt like we played really good in the early mid game. We got the dragons, and the, since we don't have the late game comp, we needed these infernal dragons really badly. And you could just see in the late game, I don't know, there was like one time, I, one team fight I trolled really hard, but besides that, um, I think our team fights were good, and they just had the late game team fights combination with Twitch. Yeah, it happens. <laughs> like some, sometimes the late game of the other team is just yeah. slightly better. I'm going to push you though. Nash's Tooth on Oriana. Like, I know Runeglaive was great for you, I know it was a great meta. Why, why are you building Nash's Tooth? Well, especially against Lucian or like AD Champions mid lane. It's just, I feel like, really, really good build since if you go to Morello's item build, you get one shot on level 6, Lucian just use Cutlet and just ult you and you're literally 100 to 0 death. And with this item build, you get like early HP, so you can't all in you anymore. So you can pretty much just try to farm up with the Roar. You get enough AP from the Roar and the Nashos kind of seals the deal because you don't need um, more AP. So you lose like 20 AP, but you get so much damage on the auto attacks. And since Lucian is like in your auto attack range, you can deal a lot of damage. That makes a lot of sense. Let's talk about a couple of the changes for Misfits in this, but you brought Max Law on a couple of tough weeks early on, but you really seem to be finding a groove with him now. What is it that's changed in the Misfits that is helping you win these games? Well, Max Law is really different from Kakao. Max Law is talking way, way more in games. He's shot calling the whole early game. So it's really, really easy to, for me, especially just to just to hack the right side, know where enemy jungler is because he's just calling and he's around tier. So it's really, really easy for me as mid laner. And I feel like from week to week, we improve as mid lane jungler synergy as well. So the last weeks, we didn't get as many kills together. But today, you could see that like one or twice, uh, we got like solo kills uh, together and just feeling really good. The only thing about him is that he's always making fun of my arena item build. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, makes sense. You actually got the uh, most fantasy points of any player this split with the amount of kills you got, so hopefully you've got yourself on your fantasy team. Final question before we toss to a break. I want to talk about Rift Rivals. In a couple of weeks' time, NA versus EU, we've heard Perk say NA isn't going to win a single game across the entire th thing. Forbidden thinks it's a lot closer. What are your thoughts? Well, so I honestly think that EU is way stronger than NA, but you should never underestimate an opponent, like especially last Worlds, you could see that uh, Russia League just got out of groups and played really, really good, so uh, I would say you were greater than NA. Have you watched much NA this split? Uh, yes, I've watched some games. Okay, I don't usually watch wildcard regions, so it's uh, not something I've usually been tuning into. <laughs> anyway, guys, we are going to go to a quick break before Fnatic and H2K fight off on the Rift up next. Make sure you join us then.